I'll see you for low kicking away today. I'm delighted to be joined by Lerone Murphy. How's it going, Lerone? Oh, good, man. Just enjoying my Sunday. Lots of food, etc., etc. Uh, well, how does a Sunday look for you? Obviously, it's traditionally the day of rest, but you're a, you're a fighter. You've got a big fight coming up. Um, mm. Do you get to indulge a little bit, or is it all um, geared towards camp? You know what? I've got nine weeks, so for me, I'm not really thinking about weight at the minute. I probably start thinking about weight more towards the six week mark. So at the minute, I'm just enjoying my Sunday. Um, I just had some ice cream and some Hagen Daz. Yeah, I went on a, on a nice long walk this morning as well. So it's not really been a rest. Well, it has been a rest day, but it's been good, man. Act of recovery, I think they call it. Um, yeah. Always nice to indulge after after some of that. Uh, did, before we get into you, did you did you see UFC 270 last night? Yeah, do you know what? I watched. It. I didn't stay up for it, but I watched it back this morning, man. Um, and uh, I'm happy and Garni won. I wanted him to win, so I'm happy it went his way. Um, the Figueredo fight was good as well. They, them two, them two, them two was to fight ten times. I think it'd be like five five or six four or whatever. It'd be the well matched. What did you make of Francis? Francis Namagamedov, I think they're calling them now with that wrestling display. <laughs> Mate. She... Showing his levels gone up, man. If you like switch up the game plan, if it's not working, it just shows. It just shows his levels gone up, and people are like knocking him because he's a striker when he wrestled. But come on, man. That's if that's how you need to win. That's how you need to win. Um, Cyril Gans a good striker, man. Very good. And and the um, the one before the flyweight, as you mentioned, that the so nip and tuck, and that fight was another really close one. Did you think they got it right on the scorecards? Yeah, to be honest, I didn't watch all five rounds. I think I watched maybe three rounds of it. Um, so I can't really judge judge it, to be honest. I, I heard he got knocked down three three times or something in the last two rounds or whatever. Yeah, it, it was super tight. And we'll move on from that because um, you've got your, your big fights coming up. But I just want to take a moment just to reflect on your 2021. Obviously, uh, the start of the new year, it's a great time to look back. You got two wins, one big KO. Still undefeated. Mm. How do you reflect on twenty twenty one? It's a good year. Obviously, I would have, I would have, in a perfect world, I would have fought in London in September, and then again at the end of the year and had three fights. But life doesn't always go like that, does it? So I'm happy I got the two wins, um, big two wins, and then um, that's just set me up for this year. Now this year is going to be a, an even harder battle. But um, I feel like this year now we can start heading into the top fifteen. Yeah, and it all starts on March 26th against Nate Landwehr. Um, yeah. You know, fr- from a fan point of fact, this is an absolute banger. He's a really fun fight to watch um, as as someone who's going to be a, an opponent of his. What do you make of him? He's good, man. He's good and he brings the heat, like you said. Um, he's got heart. He fights to the end and uh, he keeps coming forward. So I feel like stylistically, stylistically it's a good fight for me. I, f- I, f- I feel like I, I fare well with them type of fighters. Um, and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting fight, man. But I feel like I'm better than him everywhere. So I don't think he's better than anybody I fought so far. Anyway, that's how I put it that way. But he's a good fighter, and I know it'd be a, it'd be a big task as well. And at this stage of camp, obviously, you said the diet's not fully on track yet. But it, it, have you managed to sit down and take a look at the tape and, and study him or anything like that, or do you leave that to coaches? Do you know what? I I any time there's a featherweight fight on, I watch it. In the UFC, any any time, so I watched him before, but I have I have watched um, a few fights since we've been matched, and like I want to watch it myself because because uh, then you've seen it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you, you you trust your own instincts and you see holes and you see things that they do well. So I like to watch it myself. And what are you seeing? You know, in terms of the seeing holes, the seeing strengths and weaknesses. When you when you look at him and analyze him as a as a fellow fighter, what what do you see? I just think he looks he looks strong and durable, and obviously he's, he brings the pace in it. But I also think he walks onto a lot of shots, and um, they're the they're the kind of holes we're going to be looking for. And when you look at this fight and and your route to victory, is that what you're thinking? You're going to be able to run him onto something, crack him, and potentially finish him in this one. That's what I always aim for. I always aim for a finish every time I fight. I aim for a finish, whether it comes or not. We'll see on the day. But um, I feel like if he keeps coming forward the way he does, he's going to walk on to something. 
Yeah, and and just away from the fight into the actual location, this is your American debut in Ohio. Yeah. But um, the the curious thing is that a week before we've got UFC London, so just curious about you know how how that's all played out. It was a preference from you to fight abroad or or the UFC decision. <laughs> That was the UFC decision, really, and it's just like, do you know what? It's mixed emotions with me. Um, US debut, obviously, big in front of a crowd, massive. Be good to uh, fight in front of the US fans and get my name out over there a bit. Um, but I've always want, dreamed of a home fight. Um, three UFC cards have been cancelled while I've been on the card in London, and they're not going to head. That might be why they're not putting me on the card, but I'm a bit hurt about it, to be honest, but it is what it is, and if I keep if we keep racking up the wins, then I'll be able to headline a card back back in the UK. So I'll be running, I'll be running the show. Yeah, it'll come eventually, I'm sure, mate. But um, it, 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 the card needs a bit of bolster, and obviously they've just announced the main event, Tom Aspelin against Alexander Volkov. But I'm sure they could do someone like you on that card. Was there any explanation as why this card over UFC London, or was it just you know take take this one? Do you know what I did ask for? I did ask for that card and was told it was two four at the time. So I don't know who else is on the card or whatnot. And I just think it's because of all this COVID stuff and they're just trying to put whoever they can put on wherever. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think it's more of a situation like that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, just before we were interviewing, I was looking at your recent record and noticed that, that your last four fights have all been in Abu Dhabi. And I just want to wait, like, get your opinion on that experience. You, are you glad to be done with Abu, Abu Dhabi or was you getting quite comfortable over there? I'm comfy there. I love Abu, Abu Dhabi. That's my second home, man. I'd, I'd happily fight 10 fights there. I love it there. No tax. And the people are good. The um, hotels are sick. The hospitality is sick. Like, I love it out there. Great. And, and all going well in this fight, um, you, you said before you're hoping 2022 will be a big year. How many times are you hoping to fight? In the perfect world, four times, but I feel like that's that's a, a push. But I'm aiming for free. I'm aiming for free. Obviously, if it goes well and I'm healthy and stuff, I know how these fights go, but I'm aiming for free fights. And what is the aim by the end of 2022? Is it to, to be knocking on the door or be in them rankings? I want to be in them. After this fight, I want to be in them rankings. The best put my name in them rankings after this fight. Simple. And it's exciting time to be, you know, in and around the rankings at, uh, at featherweight. You, we've got the champion, obviously, Volkanovski. He's taking on Korean Zombie. Just interested to get your thoughts on that fight. I think there's levels to this, isn't it? There's levels, and I feel like it's a quite comfortable fight for Volkanovski. Um it's it's a weird it's it's weird at the top at the minute them top five fighters I think it's a bit weird at the minute I believe Max is the champion to be honest but he's hurt so the next best fight in it um, I think Volkanovski takes that quite easily um, I would like to see um, what's his name Yaya Rodriguez come back that'd be a good fight and obviously Kater's knocking on the door again now so it's spicing up a bit. Yeah, and what did you make of that Calvin Cater performance to come back from, you know, the absolute more than Max Holloway put on him to go and kind of do the same thing to Chikadze uh, the other week? Mm. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Sometimes you need to take a loss to just step your level up, and I think he looked a lot better in that fight. He looked more dynamic. He's used, he's thinking more, and I think I think he just brought the perfect game plan because Giga is very good, and he's shut him down. Um, he's shown him the level, so I, I'm happy he won that fight. Yeah, and just be finally before I let you go, um, say in a couple of years' time, by the time you're knocking on that, you know, title door and you're in the title picture, who do you expect to be holding the belt? Hmm, coming up, young talent coming up. Hmm, I don't know. You know, it's a tough one, but I feel like it'd be somebody that you won't wouldn't think think it'll be like one of the younger guys coming up. Um. He's in the top 15 now. You said maybe even Arlon Dallin, you know. I feel like he's a dark horse. He's very he's a very good fighter. And uh, I feel like he, he will be challenging for the title soon as well. Very underrated. Very underrated. Um if you want it'd be somebody you, you least expect, I, I think. So you think in a couple of years' time, Volkanovsky will be gone, Holloway will be off doing something else, 
and someone else will have that that crown. Yeah, of course, of course. Holloway won't be here for much longer. I don't think. I think I, I think he's going to win it back, defend it a few times, and maybe even move up. He'll probably move up. Um, Volkanovski, how old's Volkanovski now? Thirty-five, maybe something pushing them ages. So I think in the next two, three years, I think I think the whole landscape in the featherweight division will be a, a lot different. Absolutely, and I can't wait to watch all that play out. Can't wait to watch your fight, Mark Twenty Six. Going to be a, a yeah. bit of a banger. Can't wait that, and I just can't um, thank you enough for making some time for me today. I know, I know it's Sunday, and, and you've got you've got a family and things like that. So I appreciate it, and good luck with the rest of camp and fight night. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.